What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of Falcons in Focus. I'm Scott Bear. That's Tori McElhaney. This gentleman to my left, Rashawn Evans, self-proclaimed, quote-unquote, to me, country boy. Country boy. <laughs> country boy from Auburn, Alabama. Grew up on a ranch, yes, sir. right? Yes, sir. With uh, brothers and sisters and yes, animals. Sir. And animals. The other thing that you said, that, 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 that you just had the outdoor lifestyle. Yeah. So... Was it hard when you were a kid mm -hmm. for your mom to even like get you in for dinner? <laughs> yeah, just out running, have because trouble. Where I, where I stayed, it was real secluded, kind of you know. So I mean, not a lot of kids out there. Just you know, most of the most of maybe the the, the neighbor that was right next to me, you probably had to travel a couple miles. So wow. I mean, um, but other than that, I mean, it it was just one of those things where it was. It felt like it was before the cell phone age, but it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. You You're know, only 26. I'm only yeah. 26. It felt like it was, but, you know, at the time, I really wasn't even worried about it. Like, I, you know, I'd be outside. I'd be playing with my brother. I'd be playing, doing something. I mean, I was always outside. And, and obviously, I had the love for the game, football. So, I mean, it was one of those things. I probably would throw the ball to my pops or my, uh, my mom or something like that. You know, it got to the point where they were kind of like, look, you know, I threw all day to you. I'm like, at some point, you got you to gotta put it down, go to sleep, do something. So, but I definitely was an adventurous kid, though. I definitely love being outside. Yeah, what it, kind of trouble, sorry. No, uh, go ahead. What kind of trouble could mm -hmm. a young Rashawn Evans and his yeah. brothers and sisters oh. get into out in the middle of nowhere? Oh, you could get into a lot of stuff, especially <laughs> if you're alone. You know, that, that was the number one thing. You make sure you travel with somebody. You know, you out there in those woods, you out there just, you know, you know, walking around and stuff like that. You know, you just never know what's out there. So, but I think it does give me a different outlook on life as well. You know, you, you really appreciate the things that aren't materialistic. You really yeah. look at life in a different, you know, manner. And, um, you know, I have appreciation for animals. I love animals. You know, I got two dogs right now. Those are my, my babies. They're like my <laughs> sons. I have no kids, but those are my kids. So. What are their names? Uh, Batman and Bane. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's and it's so funny too. Are they rivals? Yeah, <laughs> it's funny too because their personalities actually Does fit. It match? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Batman is real kind of quiet, real subtle. You know, he sits back and he just analyzes everything. Right? <laughs> and then Bane is like, anytime he sees anybody, yo, yeah. you know, he's just always just trying to be alert. And you know he's the youngest one, so you go, you can already tell how that is. He just <laughs> hot head, he hot head, so. You know those two. I, I love them. I love them to death. And they, they, they actually are. They actually stay down there um, in Auburn. So oh. I go down there every now and then. I go see my family. And then I go see my dogs and stuff. So, you know, it's it's, it's always fun to be able to go down there and see your dogs and your family. What uh, kind of dogs are they? Yeah. Two, two, two cane corsos. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Two boys, two boys. So. Interesting. I, yeah. At first, I was, I, I was thinking maybe once, I, cause the first one was Batman. He's the oldest one. He's my oldest, my, my oldest one, my first. <laughs> you first first, first, yeah. first born. First, my first born. That's my, that's my oldest one. So. <laughs> You know, he at, at first I was like, maybe I might just get a girl and, you know, maybe they have some babies or whatever. Might be able to little keep family. a couple of them, a little family. <laughs> then I was thinking like, no. Nah, he needs a, a brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he needs a brother. He needs somebody <laughs> to, you know, match that energy. So I ended up getting banned and, you know, they, they love each other. <laughs> I love yeah, that. Now, yeah. I'm glad that you brought up animals and your love for animals because I read something that y'all had a bunch of animals oh, yeah, growing up. Chickens, ducks. Uh, all type of country stuff you, you could think of. Yeah. All Did you it. have a favorite? Yeah. What? Who? Who? What? Who, I say who? What yeah. animal was your favorite? And I actually look like everything. horseback riders. So, uh -huh. okay. Where I'm from, we go horseback riding. Yeah. And the people that you know, like I said, the neighbors that that we we stay around or whatever, they like you walk. You can sometimes walk down there sometimes, or you'll take a four wheeler, or you'll take a horse, or anything. We'll do that. But you know, it's it's true country living. I mean, you know, we. When you're talking about eggs and all the stuff that you get from the store, we, we would literally let, let the chickens lay the eggs and oh, we would wow. literally walk out there and we would wow. get the eggs. So, you know, I learned all of that stuff, learned how to uh, garden plant and do all the other stuff. So I learned all that as a child. Do you have a green thumb? Can you, can you oh, grow some things? absolutely. If I was stranded by myself, I definitely could survive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I definitely could survive. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. fantastic. Now, um, did... This is something that many people have talked about. Mm. Many people. You know it's coming. You you probably know it's coming. <laughs> yeah. About racing horses. Yes. Yeah. Please tell people who don't know that story. Yeah. That story. Okay. So it kind of started. My brother was running track at the time. Mm -hmm. he, he was we were going to Arbor High School. That was the high school we went to, and he was on he was on the track team, and at the time he wanted to find ways 
you know, diff different ways of how, you know, he can be fast and be a better, better athlete. And, you know, at the time, you know, we like the horseback ride or whatever. That's what we do down there in the South. He thought it would be a good idea to go chase horses. So <laughs> he was out there chasing a horse. And then, obviously, I was kind of looking at him like, you crazy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> then all of a sudden, he was like, no, come do it. Try. You know me, I'm like, you know, I'm faster than you anyway. You know, I can do it. I can, yeah, I tried it. I never called him. But, you know, eventually my brother actually was able to do it. You know, he was a lot faster than me at the time. Uh, he's not faster than me now. So just, okay. you know, but, Let's put that on the yeah, record. Yeah, put that on the record now. But, you know, at the time, he, you know, he, he, he kind of got me implemented to doing stuff like that. And, you know, for some reason, it was fun to me. I'm like, I'm a country boy. I do crazy stuff anyway. I might as well do this. And I was doing it for a couple of years. And then, you know, eventually I started, you know, playing college football. Right. And Coach Saban was kind of like, look, now, you know, you got to be able to, you know, show up and be healthy and be ready. <laughs> right. We don't want no problems you, of you doing some extracurricular activities and stuff like that. So <laughs> I kind of shut it down, you know, from then. Uh -huh. But, you know, though, I got some, some funny childhood stories for sure. <laughs> Did you ever catch one? I never caught one. Mm. That that they would can, seem like the most difficult thing. They can that, get up to is. like thirty miles yeah. an hour. Yeah, right? it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. it's very hard. And then too, you 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 don't realize how agile that they are. They're they're mm. really big animals, but at the same time, like you know, they're very 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 athletic, very agile. And you know, at the time I got really close, but I wasn't able to do it though. Now you you ride horses. You don't yeah. just chase them. Yeah, I, I truly ride horses. Okay, sure. what yeah. did you ever? Do any like equestrian mm -hmm. like competitions or no anything competition? Like that? It just any just, rodeos? No rodeos. <laughs> straight, you know, back row. You know, we me and my pops we would go and you know ride horses and we'll be in the back rows and we'll just ride for miles sometimes mm. and we just come back. So uh -huh. you know, most of that stuff that we did when we was horseback riding, it never was any competition or nothing like that. I kind of wish I got into it. Right. You know, maybe that would have been something interesting, but you know. When I was playing football at the time, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, look, I want to go to the NFL. So yeah, right. I'm like, I got to be, I got to get right. So, it worked out for yeah, you, yeah, the, yeah. the career it's path like, you chose. No, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> and I, I, th I think that you and Kyle Pitts are the, have both now fallen victim mm -hmm. to the, to the. Oh, yes. Cordero the Patterson. CP orange overalls. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because I, when Tennessee wins, yeah. apparently there are some friendly rivalries yeah. where if Tennessee wins and beats your school, mm -hmm. you have to wear the ugliest orange overalls I've ever seen in yeah. my life. <laughs> You're not used to losing no. friendly wagers with your school. No, involved, none. Zero. Right? None. Everyone, he I, I, did go to Alabama. He did go to Alabama. <laughs> yeah. They don't lose very much. No, at all. I, I was very confident before that game. I, I almost knew I wasn't going to wear that. Right, yeah. Those overalls. You and, knew that was going to end up on social. Too, oh, right? I knew it was going to I knew it would be a big thing because, you know, you, I've had many people, even, even teammates, when I was even at Tennessee, they would bet me in. Mm -hmm. Some would be scared to bet me and some mm -hmm. would be like, no, I, I truly believe we could beat y'all. And then, right. you know, they'll come to find out Bama is really like that. <laughs> really that yeah, right? So, you know, most of the time I never had that situation where I would have to, you know, mm -hmm. put on overalls or put another team jersey on. So, finally, this is the first time. And, you know, oh. at the time I was kind of like, I know for sure once they take this pitch pick they they they're gonna blow it up and that's exactly what happened so hopefully i won't have to do that no more right. it's yeah. the ugliest Thing like ever. outfit ever and i told him so i went to uga yeah. and i told him i was like i'm gonna burn it i'm gonna burn <laughs> i'm gonna burn the overalls yeah. because they are atrociously bad tennessee needs to stop it's winning right so on oh, it's just loud it's just you know not so, it yeah someone needs to beat tennessee yeah, dear <laughs> lord oh that's Please. why i'm hoping maybe georgia yeah will yeah do it. yeah can knock them down a bit it's and i'm sure that you eventually knew this question was coming too. Mm -hmm. alabama alum mm -hmm. from auburn georgia <laughs> oh, that doesn't yeah. happen very often. Yeah. Your brother went to Alabama, right? Yeah. Well, my brother, he actually, because he's a he's a year younger than me, oh, okay. so he followed me when I went to Alabama. Oh, okay. So yeah, I went against okay. Graham. Uh -huh. My sister, she 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 was a cheerleader for Auburn. Right. Okay. Yeah. Wait, I have the whole breakdown. Your yeah. dad was a running back for Auburn with mm -hmm. Bo Jackson, right? With, with Bo Jackson, Bo Jackson. Wow. Yeah. fantastic, yeah. Uh, super cool. Your mom has like four degrees with her doctorate mm -hmm. from Auburn. From Auburn. She's Freaking cool. Yep. Um, your sister was a cheerleader for Auburn. Yep. Your uncle is a vice president of something yep. at no, Auburn. Yep. It's a pretty Auburn. successful family. Too. Yeah. Oh, going over the no list. Yeah. Uh, cousins went to Auburn, yep. Yep. and then there you are. Split family now. <laughs> so I mean, when I when I made the decision to go to Alabama, um, you know, it was 
it was definitely something that they had to get used to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, I also had cousins that went to Alabama as right. well. Right, okay. Yeah. So it was kind of like, you know, when I, once I did it, they eventually, at first, it was kind of like a shock. Because, you know, I'm coming straight out of the backyard of Auburn University. Right. Legit, you know, like Auburn High School, right? Auburn yeah. High School is like maybe four or five minutes from the university. Yeah. Wow. You can throw a rock and hit it. So, <laughs> I mean, at that time, people were kind of expecting me to go to uh, Auburn University. Sure. And I don't know if you guys know, too, if you look on the internet, I think at the time, uh, they already had me on their profile on, on, the, on the site. So they already they were really? expecting me to already go to Auburn. Oh, no. So I went over there so much. Like, yeah. you know, I was, you know, it was kind of like at You're some point, there. they were kind of like, look, you, you might as well just enroll. Yeah, <laughs> right. Before you even announce publicly that you're going mm-hmm. to Auburn. So once I went on and did, you know, uh, my signing day, um, it was on ESPNU, I remember. And I had two hats at the time because originally I had three schools. It was Army University, Alabama, and then it was UCLA. Mm. Right. My mom. Where I com- went to school. Okay. So <laughs> you really could have helped me out there, man. I would have loved to go to UCLA, <laughs> but my mom was like, "No, nah, that's She's too like, no. far, and that's uh, too much fun over there." You know? <laughs> it is. I need it is you to too focus. Far and it yeah. is too fun. I need you to that's focus. Correct. So <laughs> I was like, you know what? All right. So I got two great options. I got a University of Alabama, mm-hmm. and I got Army University, mm-hmm. and those two hats were the two hats in my mom's purse. Mm-hmm. So I, I, you know, at the time of going through my, you know, thankful for the things and stuff I, uh, of all that, my coaches and everything that got me to the point where I'm at today. And then I finally, you know, decided I'll, I'll, like, um, you know, I'm going to take my talents. And then I reached in my hand, reached my hand down in my mom's purse. And at first it was the Auburn hat. Oh mm. gosh. I touched it. <laughs> That's like and almost like a, yeah, a yeah, yeah. sign or something. Nobody knew what I was reaching for. My yeah. mom saw my hand uh-huh. and she whispered to me, she was like, whatever decision you make, I'm with you. Yeah. And as I was holding the hat, something told me, it was like, don't do it. Yeah. Wait, so you didn't make the decision until you put the hat on? Exactly. Oh my God! I made the decision. It was like a toss up. It was like a coin toss at that point. Wow. It was fifty fifty. I did I really not know. realize that. That's yeah. wild. wild. It was that bad because at the time, I mean, I had, my, you know, uh, Gus Malzahn. He was calling me right before the situation. Like, yeah. You know, he was expecting like, can't yeah. wait to have you on the team. And, and I'm kind of thinking in my head, I'm like, man, what if I go somewhere else? Right. And just running through my mind, I'm like, and then too, I'm coming back to the fact that you know I was born and raised here. This would be the perfect area to be able to start my football career and be able to play in front of my family, my friends, people I grew up who saw me play football at Auburn High School, mm-hmm. this would be match made in heaven. Yeah. And I find for some reason it, something told me and, and it told me to go to University of Alabama and I got my hat. I said I'm gonna be taking my talents to University of Alabama. And I just, just hear the crowd just like gas for air. Like, <laughs> you really just do this. I was about wow. to ask like what the yeah. the response to that was. Yeah, the response was not really that good. No. At first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was like and the, even if you look on the video, it's a video on YouTube, but even my some of my family members was kinda like, Wait, Alabama? What just happened? It's like he yeah, picked up the wrong app. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, I mean, after that, I, I kind of just took it on and it was like, look, I'm going to make the best out of it. I knew that, you know, going to a university like Alabama, I knew that I was going to get the best possible chance to do something mm-hmm. with my career as far as football. And I was like, look, I'm going to work my butt off and whatever happens after that is going to happen. You won worked two out. natties and were a first round draft pick. Mm-hmm. So it worked out. It worked <laughs> out. It worked <laughs> out. It worked <laughs> out. So I'm oh happy about that. I okay. So I want to ask this because I I found I love this question by the yeah, way. Yeah, I found it when we were researching for the podcast because uh-huh. we're good journalists, mm-hmm. you know. Sometimes mm-hmm. so. <laughs> yeah. pat on back. Yeah. Um, in 2015, mm-hmm. and and you'll have to tell me if this is true or not. But okay. in 2015, your mom, she's uh, I told I said on the podcast four mm-hmm. degrees with the doctorate. Mm-hmm. Int- very smart intelligent very smart. woman yeah. um she designed a team dynamics workshop implemented mm-hmm. by alabama in 2015 yeah does that sound right yeah, she was working yeah she was at the time she was um i think it was when we won uh the first my first natty mm-hmm. uh-huh. she was working with alabama at the time so she was working with a lot of the players and she, you know she was creating different stuff for you know for for coach saving and stuff for us to you know be more successful like how to you know implement things yeah. to work with players how they think you know things that they can you know do to be a better person and because a lot of the guys were coming from you know single family homes a lot of them were yeah. trying to figure out their way a lot of them didn't have a lot of income coming in mm-hmm. as a player and you know when you you're doing full-time football and you have no income you know that's you know it's, it's mm-hmm. different different from now you know nil mm-hmm. stuff has totally changed the oh, game yeah. so 
guys were going through a lot of things and my mom at the time you know she's a psychologist mm -hmm. she's, she's thinking about ways you know change change the game as mm -hmm. far as you know with players and guys that are going through a lot of stuff so she developed stuff like that wow that, yeah. that, 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 that that's just such a cool concept yeah. that your is. mom kind of helped yeah so yeah. many of your teammates while you're in school mm -hmm. there yeah um you're you're a psych major too. Yeah, so I, yeah. Graduated graduated from Alabama with, uh, in psychology. Yeah, so like, but like, you got all these life lessons mm -hmm. just like at the dinner table. <laughs> Literally, that's all. Did you feel really prepared? Oh yeah, you, I felt really you, prepared. You know? I mean, in two, I mean, as, it was getting to the point where she was kind of like, "Look, I'm gonna have to start charging you for this." For this. <laughs> therapy like, sessions. Like, I'm giving you all these therapy sessions and stuff. But, <laughs> And it's funny too, cause even by uh, you know me growing up around my mom and knowing these these dreams about life and how to think and stuff like that, you know some of the stuff I ran into in Tennessee and learning those things is is like you know you get once you get the opportunity to be able to go and experience something, you know you you really start to realize what type of person you are, the type of things that you know that that really make you go, that really make you great. And you know I think you know it's not just so much about conversation, but it's also you know living the journey, going mm -hmm. through the journey and really learning from it. So that was one of the biggest things I learned from both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah. and again, I, I think this is true, um, that that uh, your parents only missed one football game. Yeah. So like yeah. like the level of support that yeah. you got yeah. was yeah. rarefied stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the, f the fact that they were so, so present and so yeah. active because, you know, yeah. your mom, you talk about these things like, like with your mom, but mm -hmm. like your dad's lived what oh, yeah, no doubt. you did. Yeah, and and by them being, because you know the way I was raised, you know my mom's real real analytical. She's very detailed, so she looks at like in like stuff that you wouldn't think a mom would look at, <laughs> right. as far as me playing football. And then too, my dad he played football as well, mm -hmm. you know, uh, collegially. So those two, both of them are really like they were really hard on me. They were like you know certain things that you know they felt like I could be great in. They would always try to find something out of my game to be better or as a person too as well. So I'm getting both sides as far as how to how to be the best possible version of myself. And, you know, I always I'm always the first to say I'm truly blessed to have that, you know, that type of support and staff, you know, that's behind me. You know I love that. I yeah. mean, because not everybody has not that. Not everybody and has that. And very I'm very, rare. very blessed to have that. When uh, yeah. how I know said one game and missed one game in college, mm -hmm. now your professional mm -hmm. career, how often do they get to come and, and see mm -hmm. you? Oh, they it, it, now shoot. I'm like now you're down the road. I'm down the road <laughs> now, and you know she, my mom. She's been loving it so much because you know, uh, you know me coming to see her boy, coming to see her baby. That she that's what she called me. She <laughs> uh, she it just you know it, it definitely made her happy because you know opposed to traveling five hours and now only traveling maybe two hours mm -hmm. uh, to get come and see me. I think it's it's been the greatest thing for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm able to have more time with my family, have more time with friends and family that I grew up with, grew up in, uh, grew up with in Auburn. And, you know, it's been fun. I get texts all the time. People are like, look, I remember you watching in high school and now you <laughs> playing for Atlanta. It feels like you're back at home and it definitely feels like that. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah I, I think we were talking about this in the locker room the other day because you, you, you've worked with Dean Pease mm -hmm. in Tennessee and then here in Atlanta seems like you guys are kind of wired the same way yeah. like like you see the game yeah. through a very similar lens do yeah. you think that's accurate yeah i think so and i and and that's why i have such a great relationship with dean because i understand what he wants right. you know um yeah that's the biggest the, the greatest thing about a player co coach relationship is you know it's one thing for a coach to tell you something you know what he's saying but it's another thing to understand what he's saying you know yeah. what i'm saying so i think from the many years of me being up under him because he's coached and you look at his resume, he's coached some of the greatest players to play the game. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have so much of a great deal of respect for Dean, not just because of his experience, but also, too, how he coaches. You know, he's one of those those coaches that, you know, he might be no nonsense. He might be a guy that, you know, he doesn't like to play too much, but, you know, he's hands-on with everything that he does. But at the same time, you know, he, he brings another, you know, style and way he coaches where he tries to understand you as well as a player. He knows what, what's good for you, what, what you do best, and, you know the things that you do best. He wants to try to, you know, you know, expose that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the greatest thing that I love about Dean is that it's not just about coaching. You know, he really tries to learn about you and uh, make you the best player that you possibly be. We're big Dean Pease yeah. fans. Mad yeah. respect yeah. Uh, of Dean Pease, particularly myself. I, I, <laughs> be, I, I just his mind is fascinating yeah, to me. I think it's so cool. Um, yeah. for you. You know, having played with him and you spend mm -hmm. a lot of time with him, what's your favorite Dean P's story? 
Oh, I would say this is by far the best one. And <laughs> I think because, you know, and this was at Tennessee, and it was one time I think um, we were trying to figure out whether how we were going to break practice. And I think it was maybe either during camp or OTAs, one of the two. And, you know, I think maybe the old linemen went up and they were catching punts, right? <laughs> and every, I guess one of the old linemen went, then the second one went, and then they were kind of like, okay, for the defensive side, we're going to try to see, you know, who, who's going to be the last person to catch it. Mm -hmm. oh, and gosh. whoever catches it, we're going to break practice. But if they don't catch it, mm -hmm. then we're going we're gonna to continue practice. And I, I remember uh, Coach Varys, he, uh, he ended up picking Dean for it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And he's so, probably, yeah. like, late 60s at yeah, this he, point. You know, Dean, cool. Just <laughs> sits back there. You know, he analyzes everything. He watches everything. And he called his name up, and Dean walked up there real confident, like, Oh, my God. I'm going to catch it. Wow. In my head, you know, I had a feel. I'm like, he, I think he going to catch that. Like, I believe Dean it. Dean couldn't. <laughs> I, me knowing Dean, he wouldn't allow us to see him not catch that. Right. So, you know, he, he gets out there in the middle of the field. It's split between the two. It's yeah. offense and then it's defense. Everybody looking at each other. They just hoping to pray. Like, if he catches <laughs> this, it's, it, we're going to be happy. We're going we gonna to go crazy. Mm -hmm. And then I remember, you know, Dean just sitting there. He just relaxed. You know, acting like he's done it before. The dude, uh, he, he hits the jug. Mm -hmm. The ball is selling in the air. And then he's just sitting there, just chilling. We like at some point, then you gonna have to move. Gotta cage the ball, then. <laughs> and I remember he maybe took like two steps back, and he caught it. Oh, oh wow! And man. we literally everybody <laughs> ran down to him, and we called him. He was like, hey, 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 hey. And that was probably the best. That was probably the best experience I saw. You know, with Dean, I I, I saw like the young version of Dean. <laughs> yeah. Wow. When, when he did that. That's, sure. I mean, to yeah. have the confidence to be like, yeah, I'll go it do like, it. No and big then deal. Do it. No big deal. And oh, he, and he, he called it effortless. effortless. Yeah. Like, he, he didn't have no bobble of the ball. He called it. <laughs> he just made the catch. Made that the catch. That is a fantastic story. Yeah. Uh, oh. One last question before we get to the rapid fire section. Mm -hmm. get, get pumped for that. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I've talked to you a couple different times, even right, right after you signed your contract here, mm -hmm. and you said it, it, that it kind of felt like home, that mm -hmm. you were close yeah. to home. Mm -hmm. You seem like you're having a blast yeah. this I am. season. I am. Is is that I right? Am. What is it about? I don't know the team maybe being close to home, the way mm -hmm. that you guys are playing. Mm -hmm. Kind of just like know. the perfect storm. Yeah. What is it yeah. that you just seem happy playing football? Well, I think it's kind of a combination of everything, man. And, and it, I think too, the opportunity in itself is is something that I'm humble to say and honored to say that you know, anytime you get another chance to extend your career mm -hmm. in the NFL, it's always a good thing. Anytime you get picked up by any team, whether what position it is or what role you play, it's a privilege. So I thought of it in that way, just automatically coming in. Mm -hmm. And then just to add on to it, you know, I have familiar faces. I knew I knew Dean, I knew Art, mm -hmm. I knew some of my teammates that were here from Tennessee Titans that kind of went through some of the same things I went through as far as trying to, you know, find a way and, you know, establish themselves in the league. And then, you know, all of those things incorporated just made it what it is today. And then too, also, you know, I'm close to the home. So, it's just a lot of things that just clicked and it felt right. And, you know, I felt like, you you know, thinking about this opportunity, I was like, look, I'm just take this opportunity and run with it. And, you know, I've been trying to do that ever since. And, I, you know, I'm just happy the fact that I'm able to be around, you know, really positive, uh, you know, environment as far as, you know, the Atlanta Falcons. And, you know, you see some of the success on the field of what the things that we can do and the things that we're going to do. So I'm excited about that. Man, a right. nice a nice way to end before yeah. we get into the crazy of rapid fire, yeah. which is everyone's favorite yeah. podcast segment. We think so. We yeah. <laughs> people may it's our favorite. It's our favorite. Which people may hate it, but we're gonna continue <laughs> doing it. Now okay. it's five questions. Everybody gets similar basically. questions, okay. basically the same questions. So number one, um, your favorite play of your career? Oh, I would say when I picked up a fumble against uh, Patrick Mahomes, uh. and I ran it. I lit and it was so funny, people don't know. I was completely out of breath and I also <laughs> locked my back up. Oh, so no. I was playing with a bad back the whole time. <laughs> and people and all the players, they got they was laughing at me because they were like, Look, you you run all the time. What you get your back locked up for? So <laughs> I would say that play because I played the rest of the game messed up. My back was messed up because I was running so hard trying to score. Running so, so I said, hard you yeah, can't yeah, breathe. Yeah, I can't breathe. Like I was so excited about that play. So yeah, oh, I say man. that. Is there a TV show that you're binging right now or a favorite TV show? I was – what was I watching? Um, I, I was watching Power at the time. Yeah. That, that was one of my favorites. And then I also was watching uh, – what was I watching? 
my my pops for some reason he got me into watching you know war movies like you know we used to watch huh? Troy 300 oh, you know, yeah. Gladiator mm -hmm. so I watched movies like that because I feel like that mm -hmm. when I'm out there playing football yeah. hey, so I think at the time what was what was that show called it, 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 it I forgot the name of that show I don't it doesn't air as much anymore but it was on Hulu oh yeah uh I forgot the name of it but if I find it if I figure it out I'll, I'll tell you I forgot the name of it yeah. it was on Hulu was God, that like a war, it, like a war movie? It was like medieval, or, you know, swords no. and yeah. What was the name of that show? Like, like Vikings? Vikings it, it was kind of like Vikings, but right it was like uh, it could have been maybe um, one Game of Thrones and one. Cause you have to look it up. I, I'm gonna look yeah. it up. I'll and figure it out. When this runs, yeah. When this runs, but I used to watch movies like that, social. Arthur King Arthur, oh, and yeah. stuff like that. I, yeah. I used to love movies like that. That's and awesome. And it was, it was. I forgot the name. It was on Hulu, and I would watch it all the time <laughs> with my pop. We will find it. Yeah, Fear we'll not. Find it. We'll um, it next question: favorite restaurant. Ooh. And it can be anywhere. It could be back home. It could be here. Be in Tennessee. Uh, my favorite restaurant. Okay, so. You know, I would most of the time since I'm a country boy, I would say soul food. Mm -hmm. But I've been for some reason I've been teetering on eating sushi. <gasps> really? Love sushi. Yeah, That's I don't know why I got an acquired taste for sushi, <laughs> <laughs> and I've been eating that lately. So uh, any place with sushi at this point, I love it. That yeah. is fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Country boy eating country the sushi. Boy country boy eating sushi. sushi. Oh. That's yeah. The title of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who is the Falcon that you hang out with the most? Ooh, I would say. It was, it's a toss up between Grady and TQ. Mm. Grady and TQ. They're usually yeah. together. Yeah. They're so, usually yeah. together. So yeah. if I'm together. hanging out with one, most of the time I'm yeah. with each other. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. it's totally like an older brother, little brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dynamic yes. between those guys, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, it's fun. Interesting. Yeah. Love. Well, I you gotta, as a linebacker, you got to have a relationship with your D lineman. Yeah, right. It's like a quarterback in your O line. Uh -huh. You got to have a relationship <laughs> with them because they, they keep O linemen off of me. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so I got to make sure, you know, I'm talking with them. I might even pay for the dinner. So <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I got to make sure I treat them good. So Especially Grady taking on oh, all those most, triple teams. <laughs> most definitely. Most definitely. So he's, he's definitely the one that I try to, you know, be on a good side with. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, last one, your pet peeve, biggest oh, pet peeve. My pet peeve. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's something simple. Oh, I please. would say, I would say, just if you're, if you tell me you're gonna be somewhere, oh. be on time. Oh. That's it. Scott, do you want to tell, tell the me story? You, <laughs> don't tell me you pull it up 15 minutes and it's 30 minutes. I hate that. Scott, who's the most on time person you know? Uh, well, maybe. Maybe Mr. Evans, but yeah. definitely yeah, yeah. Tori. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we often I, end up traveling together. And she, if she, yeah. there was one time she was like two minutes late, and I'm like, the world's coming to an end. What is wrong with Tori? Like, she's yeah, yeah, yeah. died. She's, in, she's <laughs> dead in her hotel room. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I that is one of my biggest pet peeves. Like, if I say I'm going to be there at this time, I'm exactly. there at this time. Exactly. I have friends who I'll be like, hey, we're actually meeting at 530. We're not. Nah, we're meeting at 6 because I know yeah. that they're not going to show up on time. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you do the same thing I do. I would literally say, like, maybe – Sometimes in the people I deal with, I would probably say two hours. <laughs> That's like, excessive. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, like, it's, it's, on, it's bad. At, you know, when you really know your friends and know oh, people yeah. that you hang around, you, you know, you, you got it. You love them. You love them to death, but you like, look, I know he's gonna be late. So, <laughs> okay. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm not getting invited to sushi anytime <laughs> no. soon. No, yeah. no, because no, I'm no. always five minutes late. But <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Uh, Hopefully we could go get sushi. Yeah, some yeah. sushi. Yeah. Yeah. We should do it. A live yeah. podcast at a sushi at a sushi wow. restaurant. Amazing. And We're they should just bring out just different different ones, and we oh, just yeah. try, man. We just talk, Oof. you know. It'll be be some nice. Say less. Yeah. I'm there for it. Yeah. That sounds awesome. And Rashawn, thank you so much for the time. Thanks yeah. to everybody for downloading and listening and watching this mm -hmm. on YouTube and wherever you can find it. Do what you do. Rate, review, subscribe to the Falcons Podcast Network. And we'll be coming to you next week with another awesome episode. See you. <laughs>